Mike, how are you? Good, thanks. How are you doing? Not too bad. Um, just quickly, first of all, um, did everybody train today? Yes, everybody's um, everybody's fully fit and fighting fit and uh, obviously very excited about the uh, the challenge to get going again. Under your remit, Mike, uh, what style of play can we expect from Ireland tomorrow? Well, it's no different to, to how we sort of started. I think, um, you know, Andy's... And his way of playing is is a, is about speed of ball. It's about how quick we can get back into position and and really put uh, put the defence under pressure. So um, I don't think that's going to change. But obviously, uh, with the new laws, this is the first time we've sort of worked with the new laws as a, as, a, as a coaching team. The players are obviously a bit used to it. So um, it's just making sure that we can tie in enough defenders to create the space for us to to go out and um, do what we're good at. One final one for me. Um, just on Jacob Stockdale switching to full back, are you viewing this as an experiment or as a position that he can really nail down for the future? No, I think um, you know Jacob's played there for Ulster and he's 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 been very very impressive and it's uh, it's just another stepping stone in his his development. Um, you know he's got a he's got a huge left boot, which is crucial in international rugby too. But um, you know he attacks the line, and he's very much in the game as well from 15. So. Um, I don't think it's development at all. I think it's a, it's a, it's about what fits best for the team, and he's been uh, very impressive in the in the training so far. Mike, can I ask you about the um, Italian team? Thanks very much for chatting to us this morning. By the way, the Italian team and the selection of uh, Paolo Garbisi at ten. Everybody says he's a young, up and coming player. I know probably from your previous time, previous life, you, you'd have seen him. But the selection A of him and B. In tandem with uh, with Carla Canna, who's who's in a creative role now at at, at twelve. See, uh, lui una bella bella uh, giocatore, ma no, uh, he's um, listen. I've only seen a little bit about him. He's looked exceptionally impressive, um, you know, especially against Leinster last week, a couple of weeks ago. Um, he looks very composed in that environment. Um, I know we've we've spoken about him over the past couple of years, but um, I've never really seen him perform. But again, he's a he's another huge left footer. So again, them having him at ten and Canner at twelve and Hayward, you know, you've got your left and your right footer kickers, which helps their exiting um, strategy. So we've got to be aware of that. Um, but I've loved the way how he's attacked the line. He's been aggressive when he attacks the line. Um, he sees the space very quickly. So, um, yeah, I think he's, 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 he's going to be very good. Give him time. What, what are you expecting from Italy? How are you anticipating that they will attack you tomorrow or try and exploit? Well, again, exploit they've you? picked a big pack. Um, Lazzaroni, you know, the back rows big. Jake Pelledri has been playing exceptionally well for Gloucester. Um, so I think, you know, that's obviously getting that quick ball, generating the quick ball, playing with the width that they've they've always played with since Franco's taken over. It's very much a, sort of a cheater's style, um, wide, wide game. So it's just making sure, and they've been very effective against some top teams. They've scored some brilliant tries against France playing that way. So, um, you know, it's making sure that we understand how we need to defend that. But, um, you know, they want to throw the ball around. They've got... You know, Violi's very experienced at nine, very good pass of the ball. Kobisi's a good pass of the ball. Kana's a good pass of the ball. So, you know, they'll definitely get that ball to the width. So that's making sure that we can, we can shut it down. And just a final question from me. I mean, it's a big, a big afternoon for uh, Hugo Keenan, Will Connors, you know, with the possibility of two more off the bench as well. I mean, what, what, have, you, what have you made as an attack coach of Hugo Keenan? I know you've seen him uh, in, in the flesh uh, for, for Leinster this season already. Yeah, all of them. Listen, all of them have, have settled in very, very well. I think it's an environment where they can they can come in and fit in and be themselves. Um, and he's very much created that and, and really drives that side of it. Um, you know, Hugo. Well, all the players are pretty much there on on form. And you know, Hugo has got the selfish, unselfish. Sorry, not selfish. Unselfish. Um, want to chase the ball. You know, he's kick chase. He's, he's unbelievably fit, he's unbelievably quick, um, and he's settled in very, very well. So um, I see, see huge things for him. He's got a huge future. Um, so very excited about Jammer as well with the way we want to play at, at nine. He's exceptionally quick to every breakdown. Uh, he gets the ball away, gives us the width and the pass as well. So, And then Will, um, 
Will and Ed have, 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 have obviously played very well for Lansdowe. Will's been that amazing chop tackler that has given blokes opportunities around them to actually get on that ball. So, and again, his work, work rate is relentless. So um, for us, these, these young guys coming in, first cappers are the ones that are going to drive this team as well. Thank you. Mike, Mike Bundy said uh, you've a hard worker on the pitch and you're a good crack off it. Um, how have you enjoyed the bubble? And I suppose in a serious point, how tough are these few weeks uh, going to be with everyone in this kind of tight, tight unit? Yeah, I mean, listen, we could sit here and moan, but we're in a very privileged position to be to be out here and being able to work, to, uh, you know, apply our trade. So um, the bubble, it is what it is. It's what we have to do to 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 get ourselves ready to perform and hopefully try and, um, you know, give a little bit of um, confidence to the rest of the country and and really drive our message, um, give something for, for people to smile about. It's It's tough across the board. But believe me, we're not moaning in camp. It's 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 been exceptionally well done. The players have been very disciplined in in what they need to do to make sure that um, nothing goes wrong. Um, so hopefully, we can put on a performance for the nation tomorrow. Hi, Mike. Um, just to go back to to Will there, um, like his defence strengths are, are really impressive. What do you and the coaches want to see from on an attacking side of the, the game? I think Will's very underrated in terms of his, his handling ability. Um, you know, he's never really been used in, 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 in with, with the sort of the Leinster way and stuff. So, um, again, he's exceptionally quick into breakdowns, not just defensively, attacking-wise too. Um, he's got a real understanding of the game. And, um, you know, he's a, he's a good ball carrier. He generates quick ball pretty much every time he carries with his low steps and his drive through the, the tackle. So... Um, for us, we don't just see him as a chop tackler. We see, we see him as, as he fits into the way we want the game to be played. And he's been exceptional for Leinster at that. Hi, Mike. Um, obviously, you know, whenever we come around to Six Nations time, everyone seems to have an opinion on whether Italy, you know, how Italy are doing in their progress in the, in the tournament. And, and, you know, obviously Georgia are pushing and others are pushing for two-tier and all those sorts of things. With your experience of having worked with the national team, can you just... Uh, you know, I'm sure you'd be a strong advocate of of the fact that you know it, need, it takes time for teams to progress, doesn't it? And the fact that they have been progressing. Can you just sort of talk us through your opinions on where you think they are, and um, you know how long it does actually just take to sort of you know really sort of you know make an imprint on a tournament like the Six Nations? Yeah, well, it's been a long time now, hasn't it? So, um, listen, I think I think the way they're playing and the players, the young players that they've come got coming through now. Um, the sort of old guard have gone. Um, so the youngsters coming through now with, with a skill set, a certain skill set that can play a particular way, I think it's very exciting for Italian rugby. Um, you know, they might not go on and win every game, but I think the way Franco really wants them to play is, um, is, is, is brilliant for these youngsters. And it really, what, will, what that will do is that will really drive the skill level at a real young age. Um, if you're Cobbisis and, and Tommy Allen's these guys, can really show what they're capable of doing. So, um, yeah, so I think, I think the brand of rugby is crucial. And with these new laws around the break time stuff, they're going to generate that quick ball, which will then give them the opportunity to get to those wider channels. So um, the development of the team is exciting for Italy. I really do believe they've got some really good youngsters, even in the tight five. But again, at international level, it does take time. Um, it's very hard to learn your trade. You know, if, 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 you, if you're playing for a... You know, not a zebra or a or a Treviso, and you're coming from a, a club on the tier below to then go jump into an international scene is is very very hard to learn your trade and to grow from it. But um, ultimately, the way they play is going to help them. And I know, obviously, um, you know you, you work closely with Connor, and um, other people have said that a lot of the things he did off the field or behind the scenes, you know, might take a good bit of time to sort of come to fruition and be seen. Do you think that you know is the hope that Obviously, you know, hopefully quickly, but in the next few years, we might see that legacy come through, you know, and some of the things that he's he put in place, hopefully, you know, really pushing them forward. Yeah, well, hopefully we do. We, we, we obviously do hope that. Um, and I think Connor did an amazing job there. It's now for, for Franco and, and, and the, the Federation to then go on and, and really, you know, jump on the back of what, what Connor put in place. But I think their whole... Um, youth system coming through now is so much better um, and, and they're driving in the right direction. So let's hope. 
Okay, guys, we'll take the last question in this section. Yeah, I'll come in there, uh, Mike. Um, you know, as a coach, are you certain about the performance you expect to get tomorrow, or are there a lot of unknowns between the debutants and some new combinations? It's been a long time since you've been together as well. Um, yeah, that's the exciting part of it, is how quickly, as a group of coaches, can we get these players to gel, and, and that's the challenge we've had. Um, what we've seen and, and how how we've done it, how we've implemented it, and how the players have jumped on board has been very impressive. So it is all about the performance. Um, we, we, we are under no illusion that it, that it is just about the performance. So um, it's going to be tough. This Italian teams are tough. They're big physical guys that have scored some very good tries. So um, I think we really want to see a one from every single player and what it really means to to wear that island jersey. I think it's, it's, it's huge. Um, the privilege that they've got to, to put that jersey on tomorrow, especially in the circumstances we're in. So we do expect, yes.